Hey, it's Kev here, and I wanted to do a video talking about the Tuya Knives Blackbeard V2. And I thought it'd be cool to compare it to some other slip joints I have, namely um, Jack Wolf Knives. But uh, I do have one from Traditional Pocket Knives I wanted to show you as well. Just going to wheel my cart over here. I love that I have a little cart now. And I got my ballet case here, and I think it'll be cool to compare them because they do have some similar blade shapes, and obviously this is based on a Lanny's clip pattern. This is designed by Andy Thiel. He is, um, or Teal, however you want to say it. He's, um, I believe, the person from Tools for Gents, which I think is in the Netherlands. I could be wrong, but you can check the Tuya website, which I will link down below. And that'll take you to this knife, which does tell you about the designer and everything. And um, this has one thing that's a little different than most slip joints. Now, it is a modern traditional in the sense that you have M390 and titanium. You have a titanium milled pocket clip. Now, we've seen pocket clips on slip joints before. I actually have another one coming that has one. Um, but the thing that that makes this one different is the half stop. It actually has three half stop positions. And the way it was described to me in the uh, listing is that it was for fidget factor, it sounded like. Um, I'm not sure if it had anything to do with manufacturing because it's easier than making a traditional half stop or something, or if it really was just for uh, fidget factor, but um, that's kind of interesting. You can see it stops here, it stops here, and it stops here, and then you get your traditional close. This does not have a stop pin, so there's no stop pin in there. This has a kick. What is a kick? Well, a kick is the traditional way that uh, slip joints would close and keep the edge from hitting uh, the bottom of the spring. So it keeps it from bottoming out. And modern slip joints, um, such as, I'll grab the traditionalpocketknives.com LCB. This is the Lake Champlain Barlow from Austin. Absolutely fantastic dude. Absolutely fantastic uh, dealer. Go check out Traditional Pocket Knives. I will try to link this down below as well. He still has some of these available. If you are looking for uh, modern traditionals, is that rust? If you're looking for modern traditionals, it's really a great time to be a knife guy. Um, if you're like me and you just you love slip joints, but you want something with carbon fiber, you want something with S90V or M390, and you want it to look like your sweet modern, you know, folding knives, right? But you like the older patterns. I should say, like, aesthetically, material-wise, I guess, I want it to look like, um, you know, modern folding knives. But I like the older pattern. So it's like this balance where I'm the kind of guy, I don't like traditionals. I don't like GECs. I don't like bone and wood and stuff like that. I like fat carbon and camo carbon, right? But I like this pattern. I hope that makes sense. So it's really hit or miss for me whether I'm going to fall in love with one or not. Um, but, you know, the what Traditional Pocket Knives is doing with his line of knives, obviously what Jack Wolf is doing, and now this one from Tuya, they really do resonate uh, for me personally. And then we actually have our own design from Devo Knives, the nip slip we're working on getting into production again you can see that modern take now this is more of a modern design because it has a choil on it uh, we did that so you cannot close this on yourself at least not very easy um, you can cut through cardboard and stuff like that as long as you have your finger on that choil you're protecting yourself and we thought people would um people who are more into locking folders would you know appreciate that and obviously i like finger choils but anyway um, I'm going to take a look and just see, it looks like there might be some rust in there. It's the downside with nail nicks and fullers when you have, um, B 
bead blasting because that's usually what is used is bead blasting looks like it's coming off i don't know what that is if it was just oil or something can't tell if it was like pitting or yeah, it's got a little bit of an orange hue to it so it might actually be just the slightest bit of rust so what i do just show you since we're here take this kpl rust eraser you can also get them on amazon which might come in handy right now in smaller kind of situation and it really is just like an eraser for a pencil and you just go like this rub in that fuller or whatever area now if you're going to do it on a blade like this with a belt satin or something test it on an area first or what i try to do is just follow the grind lines go vertical and you have less of a chance of causing some kind of discoloration or whatever and then i just take alcohol and wipe it down and then we should be good and what i'll do just to be safe, just put a little bit of Wicked Wax in there. But yeah, there's nothing there now. Just take a little Wicked Wax on your finger. And rub that on. Might as well do it here too, since I'm here. And then I'll take this Q-tip. Get it into the hole, that's what she said. Because that's really where it matters. Because it's bead blasted there. It makes it to where it can rust. Where normally M390 or whatever is not rusting. Um, it's just because you have a bead blast in that pocket. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, here's a comparison to the Lake Champlain Barlow. But this has a stop pin down there. So if you look down there, um, you should be able to see that stop pin, right? So when this knife closes, you'll hear it kind of thuds, hits that stop pin, keeps the blade from hitting the bottom. Very modern way of doing it and reliable way of doing it. Now, the old school way was to have this bump come off. It's called a kick. So when it hits, that's what's hitting the bottom. But you can over travel it because you can essentially take that kick and you can push too hard to where the kick is pushing the spring out and then it's going to bottom out as it does that where on a stop pin that stop pin is not connected to the spring it's not going to push the spring it's locked into the scales so you can't go past that right so it comes down to what you like, it comes down to if you're way into the traditional pattern and you think it's wrong to have stop pins, some people feel that way. Um, aesthetically, right, it looks different not having that little uh, kick area sticking up there. That's a very traditional thing as well. Some people just want to have that little nub in there. Um, so, I don't, and then acoustics are a big deal, you know. Um, Jack Wolf's sound as good as they do, partially because of the kick, you know. Uh, but yeah, so that's the like Lake Champlain Barlow. I wanted to show it because it does come in a clip point blade, so you can get it. So imagine this handle with this blade, and it, that's kind of what you would get there. So you can pick that up in a clip point. Again, link down below. Um, I believe I have a discount code for it as well over at Traditional Pocket Knives, or at least. Um, it'll get you 5% off or something like that, $5 or something like that. Check it out. Um, but I also wanted to show you because they're comparable in size. You know, the uh, the Blackbeard V2 here, it's a big slip joint. I, I don't prefer larger slip joints. Um, but you can see if I go to the top of the handle here, I have a good amount of knife sticking out. You know, most slip joints, uh, especially ones that I prefer, are smaller, right? I want a smaller, around a three-inch blade or something like that. These are going to be a little bit bigger than that. But uh, there's one comparison. And this is actually a high-grain design slip, uh, universal slip. I haven't tried this, but it might... Oh, it has a clip. Mm. Well, yeah, see, it doesn't really work because of the two-layer system. But... Um, 
Yeah, this has a clip, so that's how I carried it. I just used the clip. I forgot about that. But this is how I pop that in, and you can see how large it is. So now, for Jack Wolves, there's a couple that I think could be comparable. I'll get all my... Uh, I'll get all my clip points out. We can take a look at those. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other ones down here? That one's a drop point. That one is a spear point. Spear point. Warning. This one's a clip point. I think that's it. Oh, there's this one. Okay. So the one that's going to be most comparable, I would say, on the Jack Wolf side of things is the Benny's clip because it is, well a Lanny's clip pattern, which we believe, or I believe this is modeled after. So there's the Benny's clip and here's the Blackbeard V2. So even on the Benny's clip, which is probably the largest of the Jack Wolves, you have a significant size difference. I mean, the blade here comes out quite a bit more. Um, on the Blackbeard, you're looking at three and uh, a quarter three and a quarter inches on the blade um, cutting edge is just under three inches and then your overall is seven uh, between seven and a half and seven and a quarter so it's right in that like 7.3 7.4 range uh, where on the Benny's clip you're looking at seven inches. And that's probably the largest one that's out there. Um, but a similar pattern, right? You can see some similarities. Now the uh, blade design, the, the clip point is different. This one's got more of a rhino's sort of horn look to it, where this one comes straight out a little bit more. It's almost got a bowie look to it, I guess. They're very similar, but also different. So that's the Benny's clip. Then another one I think would maybe be comparable is the uh, Big Bro. Right here. See, even the Big Bro is, is a lot smaller. Um, it, it really makes this feel like perfect for me, where honestly, I thought this one was a little bigger than I, than I prefer. Um, there is a Little Bro, which, if you guys aren't aware, the Little Bro Jack is dropping next month from Jack Wolf. Knives have this sick Cordovan leather slip from Troy. And this is a OG Little Bro in copper dark matter. And, um, yeah, if you guys don't know, this model's been in the works for a long time. It came out, and then um, right before release, he found out that the uh, blade was actually able to hit the bottom. So the kick wasn't working properly. Um, I guess in production, they, you know, they changed some things from his design and it just wasn't um, stopping the blade. So he recalled them. And then they were supposed to be released again earlier this year. That was last, 2022, June. Um, and then they were supposed to be released this year again, early in the year. And, um, they had another sort of snafu of sorts. And then now they're being released in November, hopefully. So I do have one. This was a gift from Ben Belkin, the owner operator of Jack Wolf Knives. It is, uh, very cool that he gifted this to me. I needed it to complete the Jack Wolf collection. Um, I love it. And uh, here it is. I can't wait for that release next month because it's one of my favorites because of the size. It's small. It's, you know, I think slip joints should be small. It's just, I don't know. It's just how I feel about it. It's got an amazing walk and talk. Uh, I'm sure it's only going to get better on the new ones, which is amazing to think about. I don't know if he was able to add the triple flutes that he likes to do now. Um, maybe not just because of the design comparison to the big bro. But anyway, there's your size comparison. It's bigger than even the big bro. And then for uh, clip points, I have two other ones from Jack Wolf. I have the Sharpshooter Jack. It's the first release. 
And uh, this blade shape is very similar. So this is Dark Matter Blue. First release from Jack Wolf. Fantastic knife. And we'll do another big and small on this one because I have the Gunslinger Jack. It's a locking folder, but you have that clip on there, so it is sort of comparable. And now we're talking. Now we're very close in size. So let's put away the uh, slip joint version of it. Again, Sharpshooter Jack. And then Gunslinger Jack here is a locking knife, bolster knife, bolster lock. But kind of cool to compare these because they really do look similar. Obviously, this has a gun stock and this doesn't. But the blade shapes are very similar. Let's take a look. No kick on this one because it's a locking knife. But there you go. So this one has a, a front flipper, bearings, you know, that kind of stuff. Clip, clip, where this one is a slip joint. Okay. The last one from Jack Wolf is the Cyborg Jack, just because I have them here. I'll uh, take it out and we can look at it. Checking for rust since it hasn't been out in a while. <laughs> Don't know what that is down there. Let's hope it's not. Nope, we're good. Um, so this is the Cyborg Jack, one of the coolest Jack Wolves, and uh, it's a great size. But there you go, still a bit smaller. And there is one other one I didn't think about. That would be the Havalina Jack, and I have that right here. Also pretty similar to the. Um, Oh, we got something on the blade there. What is that? Not rust, which is cool. Um, this one's kind of similar to the Cyborg to me. It's the more kind of traditional version of it, you can almost say. There you go. Both clip points. This one's a little bit of a different clip point. It's got that cool kind of up and down sway to it that I like. Clean this blade off or something on there. Great walk and talk. Very cool knife. That's the Havelina. And the Cyborg, one of my favorites. All right. So there's your comparisons. Um, the walk and talk on this is what kind of at first was like, eh, I don't know if I like that, right? And I had to kind of feel it out um, and try to get used to it. And what I found is it is more fidgety, just like they were saying. That was why they did it. Um, so it's unique and different. Is it as good as a traditional or a just slip joint with a half stop? I don't think so. Like if you look at a, a normal uh, slip joint, I love the half stop position because it's a perfect sort of 90 degrees, right? You can kind of like rest the knife up like that and the blade just sticking straight up. Where on this knife, it doesn't have that position. It's past the, um, it's past the, the pivot when you get it to that spot. Um, so I don't know, is that a big deal? No, hang on, my kid's coming in. Hey Breen, I'm almost done. Can you can you hang out for a minute with your? No, I have to. You have to. You have to put. You have to put the iPad. <laughs> what do I have to do with the iPad? Something wrong. See something? Nothing's wrong. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right down. I just need to finish this video. Sabrina, come on. Out. Well, sorry. Right. I can't. Keep <clears throat> Okay, so basically I just kind of like, what I've learned is I breeze through the first two when I open it. So this is the first one, second one, and then third one. That's kind of where it catches. So when I open it, I go floop, and it pulls to right here and stops. And then I give it that last pull. On the close, I do the opposite. I go to this spot, one, two, three, and it kind of, that's where it really wants to catch. So you go to there and then you give it that last. So you go like this. And that's how I kind of fidget with it. And it's actually really fun. 
Um, and it is ergonomic in the hand. It's comfortable. It's just larger. So if you like larger slip joints, I think you'll like this quite a bit. Um, it's pretty thin. It's got really nice contoured scales. Um, the hardware is nice. It's got Chicago screws. Hey, Brian, let me turn that down a little bit just so I can. There you go. Uh, it's got Chicago screws, so it has a really cool look to it. Um, you know, you only see the hardware on the one side. It does have a clip. It's not reversible, but I guess that doesn't matter on a slip joint because, you know, you're gonna carry. You're gonna have to open it to cut yourself. I mean, it'd be very hard to do that. So I think it'd be fine left-handed. I would like an option with any of these slip joints that have clips. I would love to see options to plug it. Um, you know, just make a piece that fits that cutout perfectly in the same finish, and let me put a screw in there and then carry it without the clip. Because some people are gonna be like me and they're gonna wanna have a nice slip for it and carry it. Um, and unfortunately you can't really do that with this because if I took that clip off, it would probably be an eyesore. We should take a look at it because I technically haven't tried that. Um, it looks like a T6. So we do have T6s. This is gonna be a T8. And then you're gonna have T6s on the screws or the body screws, let's see just in case I'm wrong. So this would have been an extremely easy uh, filler tab to make. They could have just made uh, basically a filler tab shape like this, right? Um, and then you would have been able to just pop that in, tighten it down. Maybe they'd need another screw. I don't think so. Yeah, you'd probably need another screw. Um, and then you'd be good to go. I think that would have been nice. I'll double check, but I don't think there was anything in the package. No, no filler tab or anything like that. So um, this did come from uh, Dave Warren over at Tuya. So check out Warren Blades. Um, I believe he has a storefront now, which is really cool. And you can check that out at Tuya Knife US dot com it's right down there to your knife us.com it's all linked in the description big thank you to dave for sending this my way i asked him if i could check one of these out because i was intrigued by it and he was kind enough to um have one sent my way i'm going to pass this around uh my pass around group and uh hopefully he'll get some good feedback on it and and all of that good stuff but it's really cool i mean if you're uh, a modern knife guy and you want to try a slip joint, I think this is a really good uh, place to start. The price is fair. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like low twos, something like that. And you're talking M390 and titanium. Uh, it might even be less than that. I'd have to check. But you have a really nice contoured uh, scale. And my favorite thing on this knife is the uh, handle finish. The way they did this finish, it's almost got like this goldish look to it. Um, but it's also like an oxide blasted titan. I don't know how to explain it, but it's gorgeous. So that is the two Knives Blackbeard V2. Uh, pardon the shenanigans here in the video, but, um, I kind of just roll with the punches. I really like it. Um, we can look at the spring real quick and just make sure it's flush in all three. You can see it's flush there. This is going to be difficult. So in this setting, it's not. But in the true sort of half stop position, it is flush. And then again, it's not here. And then when it's closed, it's flush. So you do have it flush in all three, just not in all five. <laughs> uh, I, I still don't quite understand what the point was in that. Um, you can see the tang corners are kind of like pyramidal or uh, whatever you want to trapezoidal. It's interesting. Very cool. But, you know, if you want to try something different and not just the same stuff all the time, you know, this is really cool. I understand that it's done very well over in Europe. Um, so they sent some to Dave to see how the U.S. market liked it. So let him know down in the comments what you think, because that will help to you knives in the future. Uh, you have a nice little sharpening choil there. Um, and then you have that traditional sort of kick design. Centering's pretty much dead on right there. Very cool. So I love you guys. Thank you to Dave Warren. Links down below. And uh, I will catch you later.